Today we're going to look at Polaroid material. We're going to look at SX-70 and 600. I've shot an absolute crap ton of this film throughout my 30 plus years as a photographer. Um, this is generation four. So this is not the original old Polaroid film that I grew up on. Um, and this is also not the stuff that the Impossible Project brought up back so many years ago. I looked at generation one, two, and three. This is gen four. The material is actually getting better. It's something new. Um, and I, for one, actually like to work with it. So we're going to look at what the color differences between the SX-70 and the 600 are. In a recent video that I was watching, members of the Polaroid company were saying that the chemistry in these two films is basically the same. The difference is that the SX-70 has a neutral density type filter, whether it's chemical or whatever, over uh, the negative to lower the film speed. Uh, we're going to do some side-by-sides of these two films and see how it looks. And then we're also going to do some side-by-sides with the black and white material. Yes, these films still take a very long time to process, like literally, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes to get that full tonality that you're looking for. So we're going to take a look at this Polaroid material today, and we're going to use... I have two uh, SX-70 sonar cameras here. This one I've had modified... Uh, be 600 speed and this one is still set to the standard SX-70. That way I can do a side by side and we can see what we think about this new material. All right, so one thing that I always like to do when I load my Polaroid cameras is just make sure the rollers are clean. If you've got a lot of schmutz or dust or chemical marks on your rollers, be sure to clean that. It's, it's a good idea. I'm just running my fingers over it and making sure that there's nothing on here that's gonna damage and make any kind of imperfections in the film. So we've got our SX-70. Open it up. The package. Obviously, once again, you never want to put your thumb on this and push on this if you can help it. Uh, we'll open this up. Pop it in. Eject dark slide. Uh, you'll notice on both of these cameras that I'm not running a frog tongue. Um, my general thought is that the newest film, the Generation 4, doesn't really need the frog tongue. And I think the frog tongue is causing more problems in terms of potentially little roller marks every now and then. So what I do is when the film comes out, I just quickly turn it over and put it in a bag. My understanding from speaking with other people, too, is that this Generation 4 film is not as sensitive uh, to the light issue as earlier generations were. And recent work that I've been doing uh, basically indicate that. So I don't use the frog tongue anymore in any of these cameras. All right, so about $100 worth of Polaroid later. I mean, it's kind of crazy the amount of boxes that I went through. I have a spans of information here to look at. I broke up five different Polaroid cameras from some original alpha models to a mint version, just two sonar, one once again running, modified to 600, the other still a dedicated SX-70 speed. And it's really fascinating. First thing I'm gonna say is the film is a lot better than it used to be. Um, the quality of the color, the black and white, it's getting really good. Um, additionally, uh, the, when I mentioned in the video that you don't need to be shielding it from the sun right away using the frog tongue, proved to be 100% true as well. Um, the material absolutely just worked perfectly. You know, I pulled it out, stuck it in my bag, no problem. Um, in terms of color, what's interesting is obviously all of these cameras have variability in them. You know, this has got a sensor that's very old, that has never been CLA'd. I've had this camera for over 30 years. This one's been recently CLA'd and, and, and converted. And as a result, the exposures on each of the cameras are just a little bit different. Um, the Mint camera that I have uh, was actually one of the most accurate in terms of overall exposure. But that, of course, makes sense because it's got a completely retrofitted board on the inside. Um, in a very accurate exposure reading. When I look at the images, the difference mm -hmm. that I see uh, between the 600 and the SX-70 is that it, it's interesting. In color, uh, the 600 has a tendency of shifting just a little bit magenta in the blues, whereas the SX-70 is a little more blue. Um, and, and, and it's not a huge mm -hmm. difference, but you can absolutely see how one is a little more magenta and one is a little bit more blue. And by the way, this held true whether it was the Mint camera running the 600 or the Sonar running 600. The 600 had a little bit more of a magenta tone than the SX-70 did. In terms of black and white, the uh, SX-70 black and white 
is a little darker, a little thicker feeling when compared to a 600. The 600 is a little bit more expansive. It's a little bit sort of brighter. You know, it, it's got a, a more open shadows and very controlled highlights. Whereas the SX70, I found them all to be just a little darker. And I think if, uh, if I had added a little additional exposure to that, it would be fine. So overall, I like both materials. I think it just would really depend as to what film speed I need to work with. If I'm happy with SX70, that's great. Otherwise, you know, I'd probably shoot the 600. The 600 has one big advantage in my mind, is that it's available freaking everywhere. Target, Walmart, Best Buy. I mean, it's not a hard film to get nowadays. Whereas the SX70, I've either got to buy it from Polaroid or from a specialty camera store. And if I'm out traveling, I don't want to get into that nightmare. I want to just be able to run into a store, buy two packs and go. So the 600 will probably be a bread and butter material for me. And as I said, overall though, I'm really happy with where this fourth generation is gone. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing some more shooting. So stay tuned, have a great day, go shoot a ton of film and be well.